Hello everyone, Tortoise Investing. It's Friday. Friday is usually when I do a quick little go through of my portfolio and show you my holdings and stuff. But I thought today, why not just do a deep dive, take a look at all my holdings. It's probably going to be a lot longer than my usual two to four minute videos, which is what I like to try and keep them at. But why not do a nice little deep dive into everything so, uh, yeah, guys, I hope that you enjoy this. This is different than what I usually do. Uh, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Both those things are super duper free and would make me extremely happy. And comment down below. It can be hi. It can, you can let me know what you've been buying here lately. Have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hear from you guys. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the portfolio. These are our holdings. This is what we're setting with. Uh, here so you can get the average buys so this is everything from most unrealized gains to the biggest losses Activision is the only one I'm not going to be going over because Activision the reason I'm buying into it is I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure that the Microsoft merger thing that they're going to be bought out by Microsoft and I'm setting a 7651 I'm going to be able to sell each of these at 97 a piece so it's about 20 percent upside and it's down so i'm just gonna buy even more of it when i get the chance to but uh yeah guys this is what we're setting with uh i did get rid of my bonds because i i don't want to invest like that i i could just go into bonds play it safe do triple leverage bonds but like i don't know just something about that wasn't setting with me so i'm going more into what i want to hold for the long haul and these would be those. So first on our list is United Healthcare Group. This is through Qualtrum. Absolutely love this site. Uh, got a good cash uh, cash flow yield here. Uh, their debt very manageable, very manageable. Uh, got a lot of free cash flow. EPS is growing. Net income, revenue, it's all growing. They got a really consistent return on capital employed. You definitely want to see this like above ten percent. Uh, shares outstanding. This is just dropping ever so quickly. So this pretty much checks all the boxes for me. Uh, I got in when it was under 500 and I plan on buying more of it. If they want to keep giving me more and more in the 480s, 470s, I'm just going to keep gobbling it up because I believe for the long haul this is a fantastic holding. Next up, Visa. Uh, same thing. This is one of my positions I'm up on. Again, free cash flow yield is really high. You really, really like to see that above 3%. Revenue, beautiful. EBITDA's rising up. Free cash flow's rising up. Net income, the EPS. They don't have a lot of debt when compared to their cash. You never want to see this just through the roof. But uh, yeah, they, they could easily pay off their debt. Dividend growth is good. Shares outstanding. Again, lovely things you want to see. Return on equity is beautiful. Great, great stock, and I wouldn't mind if this dropped below like 212 so I could buy any, even more of it because it is a great, great holding. Next up, we got Vici. Love me some Vici. This stock was one of the very few that actually performed well in 2022. Uh, again, a lot of things ticking in the right direction. Uh, free cash flow, their dividend has been rising like 7 to 8% every year, so it's something great you want to see. Um, the thing with this, it's a REIT, so yeah, they're going to be, their shares outstanding is probably going to be going in the opposite direction, and they're going to have a little bit more debt, but they are like 100% when it comes to collecting their rent, uh, this is a casino, uh, like, gambling and stuff there in Vegas, they own a lot of those properties down there, so, I love it, uh, if it drops below 32, plan on buying some more of it. Uh, Dollar General is one of my newest holdings. I love Dollar General. There's one right up from my house that I go to almost daily. Uh, I think this is just a great, safe stock. Was the rest of these on annual? Yeah, they were on annual. Okay. But uh, if you can see here, again, revenue, EBITDA, free cash flow, net income, EPS. I, I just feel like I'm saying the same things because this is what I look for when I am looking into an investment. Uh, shares outstandings dropping. I'm sure 2020. It went down to 13% capital employed, but they, and a, a great holding. 
Uh, this is capital lease debt is different than just hard debt. Uh, so they, they got that covered. The free cash flow yield on this is down a little lower than what I would like, but it's not negative. So I like it. It's just, it's one of those old reliable holdings and it dropped down into the two twenties and I just, I had my eye on it and I decided why not? I'll, I'll move some money in that and start a position. Uh, CVS, I like CVS under 90. Uh, again, everything that I've been saying, revenue, EBITDA, free cash flow, everything's ticking in the right direction. The payout yield is a little high right now, the payout ratio, but um, I think that they're going to be able to get that under control because their EPS is rising. Uh, again, just check so many boxes. They do have a little bit more debt than I would like, but... I trust that this company is going to go on the right track. I think that they're going to get things rolling, and with in a year from now, I could see this being over a hundred a share, easy. But I'm not a financial advisor. That's just what I see, and I like what I see here in CVS. They've been rising their dividend when they do increase it. They were on a pause here for a little bit, but it's usually they increase it about ten percent every year, and I like that. I like a good dividend rising holding uh, union pacific this one i sold out of and then just felt i i really shouldn't have sold out of it but i sold out of it at a profit at like 214 i got back in at 203 i'm never gonna complain about that um this is one of those like if something was to go wrong the government would step in to protect them bail them out if need be because it is just it is a steeple and it's needed they've got such a big moat uh, they do have a little bit higher debt but they could pay this down easily their their EBITDA debt ratio is I, I like what I'm seeing with this company but again with the other things I was talking about shares outstandings dropping a really good median there on return capital employed next up on our holdings we got PepsiCo uh, I chose them over Coca-Cola because they've got a little bit of a lower payout ratio. And when it comes to overall growth, I just think that they have so many different products. And uh, they, they're into the snack foods and they have pricing power over a lot of other different companies, especially in this sector. That's just such a uh, fan favorite, if you will. But again, uh, it's the same thing I've been saying with all the other ones. If you look, uh, everything's just going in the right direction. Revenue, EBITDA, or free cash flow yields where you want to see it. Their EPS is rising. They, again, they have some debt, but it's easily manageable. Got a good dividend growth increase going on. Uh, capital employed, high teens, usually where you want to see that. And the shares outstanding, again, is going down. Uh, you're going to notice something. Uh, pretty much every one of these holdings have the exact same things going on. Good revenue, EBITDA. I, I, I just, that's things that I look for. Uh, again, Johnson Johnson. Same story. Uh, good cash flow yield, revenue, EBITDA. Free cash flow is pretty high. They got more cash than debt. You always want to see that, especially with. Uh, Healthcare companies, uh, EPS is growing, the income's growing, their shares outstanding has been slowly decreasing, and they got a good return on uh, capital employed. They're also got, uh, they're splitting into two different sectors, which I think is going to be another fantastic thing for this holding. I could see this stock, I think that I've seen an analyst had a 180, 185 put on this I, I easily could see that so while this is below 170 i'm just going to keep throwing some monies into it dollar cost averaging through everything and through all the chaos and i think that it will pay off in the long run so next up my two etfs that i hold is schd and spgp i'm just going to show you here the three and five year and ten year when it comes to VOO and how they compare to it uh, VOO, three years, 8.53. The five year is 9.29, and the 10 years, 12.57. If you see here, SCHD, better than the market 
in every one of those in the growth categories and it pays a higher dividend yield it is so good that's the reason that this is 20 percent holding in my portfolio and the other one that i hold spgp uh again it just consistently over the one three five and ten year has beaten voo has beaten the market so that SCHD is 20% uh, my holding, SPGP is 10%, and it's probably where I'm going to be keeping things with it. But yeah, guys, that's the that's an in-depth look at everything. I uh, hope you enjoy the little analysis. If you have any questions or anything, let me know down below, and I hope everyone has a good weekend. See you.